Hello, so in today's video we're going to look at why the USM40 was replaced by the Avon M50. Now, um, this is sort of a bit of one of these controversial things, because lots of people say to me, the M40, it was an amazing mask, why did they replace it with a piece of crap like the M50? And I say, well, you know, that's kind of a bit like to me why they replaced the S10 with the GSR. But I think there's less of an extremeness to this, because obviously with the S10, I think the S10 was marginally better than the M40. Not by a lot, massive amount, but I think it was a slightly better mask. Um, and then obviously I think the GSR is nearly total crap. It does a few things better than the S10, but for the majority of it, it's, you know, many steps back compared to a couple of steps forwards. Where the M50, for the most part, compared to the GSR, is far, far better. I've already done a video comparing them. It's a lot lighter, it's a lot smaller. In general, all the parts are built to a better quality. You know, there's less bulk on it, so it's a lot more slimline. Um, but it does still raise the question with some people why it was replaced. And the M50 as well has that same sort of, you know, design philosophy as the GSR. It's a mask that's kind of reinventing the wheel a bit, because what they're deciding to do is, um, you know, make a mask that takes um, kind of self-sealing filters, if you want to call it that, or have a self-sealing mask, as opposed to the good old-fashioned 40mm. So, let's first talk about some of the problems the US had with the M40. Now, the M40 was a mask that was kind of rushed through development. Um, it started off life known as the XM40, which is a prototype mask designed in the 80s, and then the actual M40 went into service in the 90s, just after the Gulf War. Now, the problem with the M40 was, um, well, the, problem, the reason they needed the M40 to begin with was the US had the M17 for quite a while. The M17 being the cheek filter mask. Now, if we go even further back, the US had the M9 in 60mm, and the M9, for all accounts, was a much better mask than the M17. The M17 had a few quality of life improvements over it, like a voice diaphragm and everything else, but you could do that on a 40 or 60, you know, 60 millimeter mask, no problem. So the M17 was again trying to reinvent the wheel and it didn't manage it. The um, main issues being with the M17, obviously it had cheek filters on the inside, they're a pain in the ass to put cheek filters in, it's slow to do and you can't change them in combat. So basically once you've got the cheek filters in there you have to hope if you're using the mask that your filters don't expire in use because you can't easily switch the filter. Now most other nations in the world at this point were sensible enough to stick with 60mm NATO or go to 40mm NATO. You know they, they found something that worked for them you know an easily um, available screw on screw off canister or a filter. Um, not so much the US. So when what I think basically happened is the US went into the Gulf War in a scenario where they were actually having to use all the NBC, CBR and equipment and that kind of thing. Um, they saw pretty much all their NATO allies were using 40mm masks at this stage and then they said, oh wow, we need to replace that. So, you know, the um, XM40 or M40 was rushed through. Now, as I said before, a big problem with the M40 is um, it's actually a silicon mask underneath and they had to make the second skin for it a mask for your gas mask um, because the mask itself wasn't good enough to resist a lot of chemicals. Who thought silicon would be a good idea? I don't know. So, you know, from the get-go they already had problems with it. Um, the MCU-2P, which was the Navy and Air Force mask, that also had problems with it, you know, to an even bigger extent because more of the mask was made out of silicon. So they had even more problems with that one of bits, you know, wearing out really quickly or discolouring, you know, basically meaning that the masks didn't have a very long shelf life. Um, and the other thing you need to bear in mind is America's always had this military industrial complex, so America always wants to keep replacing things, um, you know, with better things or questionably better things, um, just to basically keep people earning money um, in certain places. I won't go too much into that because it's a bit of a controversial subject. So they had the M40 and they decided it needed replacing, but they decided that they needed some extra features on their new mask. So. What they wanted on, um, basically what the M50 ended up being, was a mask that had, um, obviously as well as the mask being actually made out of butyl rubber or proper rubber, so um, it was more chemically resistant again, there was nothing really stopping them doing a new production run on the M40s made out of butyl to begin with, they could have just simply done that. Um, what they did with the M50 is they wanted a mask with a self-sealing filter system. Now the idea is, with a mask like this, that when exposed to something like nerve agent, which is super deadly even in very low quantities, you want something where there's no chance of accidentally inhaling it. Now, 
the design philosophy, I guess, has always been in lots of militaries that your soldiers are really stupid and you need to give them idiot-proof equipment. So the idea of this mask is that you have both your filters on it and you've got these self-sealing filter ports. Now, admittedly, these were actually on the floors of the M50 um, because the seals I've got aren't the very good ones. Um, they later made a much more robust seal. However, I found that if you store the mask without the filters on it, um, they do go back to the working condition. So the idea is that when you've got a filter on the mask, um, it's open like that. So you, as you can see, um, it lets air through. Now, the idea is as soon as you take the filter off, it snaps back shut. So, you know, that's the basically the general idea that when there's sort of a depression going on there, when the filter's attached, it will be open. When you take, you know, the filter off, it should close again. But the problem is, as you can see, that they're not elastic -y enough or whatever, or not springy enough to do that. So, you know, filter on, it's open. Then, see, this one works better. When the filter's on it would be open, as soon as the filter's removed it closes up, and that's the idea. The GSR's system for the filter I think might be marginally better, but that's got so many other problems with it, it's not worthwhile. So the idea of this mask is, unlike a 40mm filter, where you'd have to unscrew your 40mm, hold your breath, then screw your new 40mm in, the idea of this mask was simply that you'd remove one filter at a time and you couldn't breathe through that filter port as soon as you take the filter off. Um, so in a nerve agent scenario, nothing's going to get into the mask. But as people have said to me before, you know, it'd still be completely possible that you take a filter off, there's some contamination around there. When you put a new filter on, the contaminants can then get into the mask. It's still not, you know, a foolproof system. So that was the idea anyway. Um, however, it does raise a question to me, as I've said before, why you couldn't have a system on pretty much any 40mm mask, but there's like, let's say a little valve here, or a little tap. Um, you turn the tap, it seals the filter port from the inside. You then unscrew the filter, swap the filter over, turn the tap around the other way. Um, you're back to using that. Now, one of the advantages I will say the M50 has over 40mm um, masks is you've basically got a much smaller filter, as you can see. Um, so if you have two of these on, two of these only just about equal the weight of a 40mm. Um, so you can obviously have two of these on. Um, that will last you quite a while, allow easier breathing, which is another thing. If you've got two filters like this on the mask, you can breathe easier. Um, one of the advantages of a mask like the M17 was easier breathing, because you've got two filters you're breathing through, not just one. So that is an advantage. Now, there was another problem with the um, M40, which I'll get into now. And that problem was the bad reputation of these filters. These are um, called C2 filters, USC2 filters. And these are the ones where the whole chromium scandal started, and the reason people are still really afraid of chromium. Now, I admit, if you can use another chemical or metal compound in a um, filter for catalytic conversion, which is actually safer than chromium, of course use it. Um, but the point was, it was better to have chromium in a filter than not have it, because it meant you had good protection from ammonia, I think was the main reason for having it. Now, the issue with the C2, and you can actually see it says C2 up there, um, was that they were built to quite a low standard by some of the manufacturers, so the chromium would leak out, which created this kind of health scare scandal of um, are we putting our soldiers at risk of dying from chromium related illnesses? Now, there's a study, and I've talked about this before, that was actually commissioned, or I think several that were commissioned um, in the wake of this, and basically they all said the amount of chromium in one of these filters, you'd have to be, you know, constantly exposed to leaking chromium filters, and you'd have to be wearing a mask for hours every day for, you know, like, every day of the year. So, you know, you'd have to wear your masks, let's say, for an hour every day, 365 days a year, for decades, to be at, like, a 1% higher risk of cancer, or, like, lung cancer due to the chromium risk, so it was basically totally negligible anyway. But the point was that, you know, these C2 filters really caused a scare at the time, so they had to replace the C2 filters as well as the C2A1 filters, which were the green-looking ones. Um, so, you know, that was obviously, I think, one of the things that probably sped up them wanting to replace the M40, was to totally distance themselves from these filters and everything else. Um, but overall, you know, I don't think the M50 really offers all that many advantages, as much as everybody calls me an Avon fanboy. Um, now, what they Avon do, did do, and a lot of countries have bought this, is a mask called the C50, and the C50 is this in 40mm. Um, so you can use your good old conventional 40mm filters, 
um, but it's basically this lightweight, you know, cool looking mask. Um, now, maybe America also wanted the panoramic lens as well, but I do think one of their major things was they wanted the self-sealing filter ports. Um, you know, like easier breathing, because I think for some reason the Americans still really love the M17 deep down, they want to keep bringing back masks that are like the M17. But I will obviously say a mask like this with exterior um, cheek filter kind of design is much better than one with interior cheek filter designs for obvious reasons, that, you know, you can actually replace the filter when they need replacing. Um, but I think Republic of Ireland and a few other countries use the um, C50. So it's basically literally this mask, but set up for 40mm filters. Uh, and if you didn't want one of the panoramic thing, you can still buy FM12s from Avon fairly cheaply. Uh, I've had a lot of people on here tell me that they're from whatever countries, you know, that are essentially what you'd call developing or third world countries. Um, you know, quite poor countries, and I don't mean that in an insulting way. I'm just literally saying they're countries, you know, that don't have a very good economy. Um, and things like that, and those countries are able to afford to buy new FM12s from Avon because obviously Avon is pricing them cheaply enough that most nations that want to buy new respirators can buy FM12s at an affordable price. So it's not like, you know, there's a problem getting new 40mm masks either. So, really, that was the main reason I think, or well, they're the reasons I think the M40 had to be replaced in US service, or they decided it had to be replaced. Um, was that the butyl second skin thing again? Make your mask out of a you know chemically resistant thing in the first place would probably be a good idea. You know, use butyl rubber like everybody else has been doing for quite a while now. Um, you know, should have had a decent enough filter in the first place that didn't cause a scandal that they wanted to move away from that filter. Again, there are practicalities to the idea of a self-sealing filter thing, but in reality, as I was saying, there's no reason you can't have a 40mm design that also does that. It'd be quite easy, in my opinion, to have a 40mm filter that's sort of shaped like the M50 filter, you know, like it's got that sort of con concave design, whatever you call it, want to call it. Um, you know, have a 40mm filter that you can screw on. It's, you know, two smaller 40mm filters rather than one bigger one so the weight's evenly distributed, and then you can just have a tap that you can turn when you want to replace the filters one at a time, so there's no issue of um, choking to death or anything like that. So, that's, in my opinion, probably why they switched the masks around. Um, so hopefully that's answered the question for all the people who legitimately wanted to know, or want to know what I would speculate the reason being. Um, you know, as I said, we don't really know what goes on in the heads of all these like military industrial complex kind of things, but um, they would be my guesses really, you know, the M40 did have some flaws with its design, you know, and if it was me I'd just personally design an improved M40, uh, rather than, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel and going with the M50. But I don't think the M50 is a bad mask at all, as I've said, it's just that I'd still rather have a 40mm mask, because that's the tried and tested thing nearly everybody uses. Because the other issue of this, as I've said before, is if you're using filters like this and have all your NATO allies are using 40mm NATO, you're incompatible with their filters, which isn't good if... It's like if America suddenly decided to pick a new ammunition type for all their rifles and then everybody else with 5.56 or 7.62 NATO couldn't, you know, standardise ammo of America. It wouldn't be a brilliant idea. But anyway, this is the mask America chose. I have... I don't think they have any plans on replacing it soon, so there you go. But that's my opinion anyway on probably why they changed away from it, because the M40 had a load of known problems, and rather than fix those, they probably wanted to say, look, we've bought something completely new and brilliant. Um, you know, but as I said, the M40 is definitely not a bad mask, it just had some weird design choices with it, but, you know, swings and roundabouts.